looked at me and she goes, is that what you're wearing? And I said, what's wrong with what I'm wearing? And she said, you're wearing shorts and flip flops, you know? And I said, but I'm also wearing a very nice black t-shirt. And that's the only thing they see is from the neck up. So, um, anyway, uh, I, I really do, uh, enjoy working with book creator. I'm their teacher success manager. And so basically a little bit of sales, lots of webinars and trainings, speaking around the country, that kind of stuff, going to conferences. Uh, that's what I do. My job really is just here to support teachers and make sure that districts that, that do purchase Book Creator are getting their money's worth and those teachers and districts that are just using the free version are being successful at doing that, right? Um, I was a special ed teacher for 12 years. After that, I was a technology integration specialist for seven, and uh, I've been using Book Creator personally and professionally for about eight years. So that's a little bit about me. I've got a wife and three kids. Uh, and a dog who uh, is not listening right now, it sounds like. Um, my kids are nine, six, and almost three. Uh, three next week. I don't know, actually. What, what is today? It's going to be three on Sunday, maybe? Three on Sunday. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, I love golf. I don't have a lake in my backyard like uh, Garth does, but I have a golf course in my front yard. So, uh, that's pretty cool. All right. So, uh, today's agenda. Basically, what's going to happen is I want to talk to you a little bit about Book Creator uh, and, and the different features of Book Creator. Um, I probably will give you a little bit of a story here first, just to give you a little bit of background uh, for me. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get in and play uh, a little bit with Book Creator. So just real quick, I'm not going to go into this whole thing, but the only reason anybody knows who I am is because of student publishing. And for a long time, um, you know, I had a lot of problems with my students. Uh, these were my kids uh, right here, and I know what you think. They're smiling and laughing. They can't be that bad. Um, but don't let them, the smiling faces fool you, right? My students were just evil, wicked, awful kids. They didn't want to learn. They didn't care about me. They didn't care about anything. Um, as a matter of fact, these aren't even my kids. Uh, these are some Google kids that I found. I don't, I don't know whose kids these are. Um, but my kids didn't look like this, right? They were angry uh, a lot. And like I said, they just didn't care. And, and so what I was trying to figure out, though, was why they didn't care about writing specifically. And I found that the reason that these kids didn't care about writing or school in general is because of three things, right? And um, I tried all these different writing prompts and cool things. These kids excited about learning and none of that worked. But the reason I found out that these kids absolutely hate writing in school is because one, they're not publishing and doing work for a global audience. I'm sure you've heard Garth talk about this before as well. Uh, if, uh, these kids are not leaving behind any work that's going to benefit anybody else. And the third thing that I found is um, that these kids don't actually get to work together. Right? They don't get to collaborate on anything. So those were my, my big pieces. And I'll, I'll leave this up here so that you can, you can kind of take a look at this. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the, the, the tool, and that was Book Creator, and that's how I was able to get my kids excited about writing. I told them I was going to take their garbage writing and publish it online so that the whole world could see. And once I did that, uh, that changed, right? That changed their mindset because now instead of just writing for a teacher who was getting paid to read their work and grade their papers, they were now reading or writing for an audience that wanted to see it, right? They wanted to uh, comment on it and, and see the amazing work that these kids were doing. So um, if you are not familiar with this or not uh, yet, I'm going to, hopefully you can see me. Do you guys see Safari uh, pull up here by chance? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you real quick, if, you, if you're not familiar with this, if you go to app.bookcreator.com, so app.bookcreator.com, this is where you can sign up for a free account. Um, and I just want you to be cautious of, of, of something right here. So the very first thing that pops up is this login screen, and, and teachers just get so excited, they click sign in with Google, and they didn't realize that they are signed in as a student. So there's a student side over here with the smiley face emoji, and then there's a teacher side with the graduation cap. So make sure you click on the teacher side and then sign in with Google or Office or if you do want to use your email, do that as well. And this just gets you a free version. And the free version of Book Creator is going to give you 40 books, one library, um, and basically every feature that we have of, except for real-time collaboration and a couple of other little things on the back end. Hey, John. So, yes. Since we're here, uh, I'm not sure how everybody's seeing that. Can you just plop that in the chat, the address, so people can click on it directly? Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. So this, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the um, where, now we're hold on. I got. I can't find the chat. Chat box is upper right hand corner. There's a little like thought bubble. It looks like a thought bubble. 
except when I'm sharing my screen, I don't see it. Uh, do this. You may, you know, what, is it disappear when you share? Yeah, I think it did. Sorry. Here, hang on a second. Put it in the chat here. I just, I'll stop sharing for a second. All right. So just make sure that when you do this, you sign in as a teacher. All right. So that's just really uh, the most important piece. Um, so when you sign in as a teacher, uh, it gives you that free account and it gives you the option um, to, to play around and have some fun. And like I said, the free version is really good. Your teachers are going to use it. But a lot of times I get teachers that sign in as students and I get students that sign in as teachers. And somebody, I think Garth was talking about videotaping and recording students and things like that. Book Creator takes privacy very seriously. So I try to explain this to teachers a lot. When students sign in as teachers, it violates almost all the, the privacy policies that we have in place. I filled out, I don't know how many different legal documents this year with school districts, uh, making sure that we comply with their privacy and making sure everything is legit. And then they get a student who signs in as a teacher, um, sometimes because teachers tell the kids to do that, uh, and it's just not appropriate. And I just want to caution everybody about that. So please, as you're talking with others about this, make sure that, that they understand that. Um, because then kids get into our chat windows and they get into our chat features and support documents and things like that that we don't typically want them in. So be cautious. Um, anyway, once you get into Book Creator, it will ask you to create a library. And so these are my libraries. And a couple of really cool things that you can see here. So this is our library feature. Uh, with the free version, you get one library that has a lock on it. That's your rough draft area. You get to play around in there. And then you can make more library. If you scroll further down, there's a section, for me it's way at the bottom, that says join a library. And this is where you can actually create a library and your students will join your library to make books. Uh, you can also join another teacher's library. You can join my library, which you're going to do in a little bit. Um, it's going to be it's going to be really cool. So that's the teacher dashboard. The other thing here is a section on resources. And I can't express how important I think this is for teachers. Um, they're always looking for things that they can do right away. And the resources uh, by grade level, we have resources by subject, and all of these are really awesome uh, at getting uh, teachers' ideas, right? So if I'm a science teacher and I don't know how to use Book Creator in science, click on the Science tab and you'll see a lot of great stuff there. Uh, if you keep scrolling down, there's some books that our Book Creator ambassadors have written, which are amazing. So 50 Ways to Use Book Creator in a Classroom, Differentiated Learning, Social Studies Projects, Formative Assessments, all kinds of things. Uh, and we're also doing now, we just started working on, obviously everybody's working from home, we just started doing these uh, remote learning webinars. Uh, so how to use Book Creator for remote learning and home learning. And um, those have been going over really well, so we have those as well. If you scroll down, you can find all of our webinars here at the free weekly webinars tab. And then we have other uh, little goodies that you can play with as well. But I'm going to go into a library here. Uh, and I'm going to invite you guys to join that library. So I'm going to put this code up here. And uh, Garth, if you can put that into the chat window, that would be great for me since I apparently have trouble figuring out where it's at. Um, but this code will get you into my library uh, as a student. And so once you do that, Garth, just let me know when you have that in there. I think I did 6697WY, correct? No, 79WY. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I gave you the wrong code, people. So, nice work. <laughs> it's all right. We'll get it. All right. So, when you invite a student into your library, or when I invite you into my library, you should see these two books. So, if you're if you're good at multitasking, you can do this. You can see the two books, and when you hover over the books, you'll see a play button. I see a pencil because they're my books, and I can edit them. But you will see a play button, which means you can go in and look at the book, but you can't really mess with it. So at this point, we have two options. So one option is I just ask you to click a new book and make your own book inside my library. This is the method that most teachers use. So kids can choose from six different styles of books. Personally, I think we should get rid of this whole top shelf, and I think we should just focus on the three bottom ones. Not everybody wants to make a comic, and that's okay. So that's why a lot of people click up here on the top row. But then when they get into the book, they're like, hey, where did the stickers go? Or where did the comic text go? And it's because they chose a plain, boring book. So I always say, whether you want to make a comic book or not, choose landscape or choose uh, one of the comic features uh, down here at the bottom. All right, so that's one method. Students can create their own books inside of a library. The other method, which is what we're going to actually do today, is on this book that says Your Playground, I'm going to turn on real-time collaboration. So real-time collaboration 
is a feature that comes with our paid plans. We do have a trial of the collaboration, so if you're on a free plan and you want to try it out, you can do that. It used to be 14 days, now it's 90. Uh, we decided to open up collaboration for everybody for the next 90 days or so, so hopefully that will get people through the school year and they can try out collaboration. But once you go into this book, uh, underneath there's a share button, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on collaboration. I'm going to hit start. And if you don't feel comfortable doing this today, you can do this tomorrow. I'll leave this library open so that you can go in there and play around. But now when you click on that book, it's a pencil, and it will let you get into my book and mess around with it. So I see that Jennifer's in there, Melissa's in there. This is great. So here's what I need you to do. I need you all to find a blank page. I don't care where it's at. Um, you just need to find a blank page. So I can go to pages view here. I can see that where all these little heads pop up. Right? I can see what pages people are on. So just find a blank page. I've got 12 pages in here. Um, if that's not enough, we'll just go to the last page. We're just going to hit the plus button a few times. Add some blank pages there. So if you run out of a page, um, just go ahead and make a new one. That's fine. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i go down here and start on page uh, 16. Hey, John. Hey, John. we got a couple of people asking some questions, so I'm going to have you backtrack a little bit. So there's people yep. saying can't seem to get in. Do you want to walk through that process again for them? I think a lot of people are trying to watch you do it and then switch screens and do it again. You know, yep. So they're watching and trying to go back and forth. So if you could do that, um, I think I was lucky enough to have another computer, so I was doing it on the other computer. That's why I got in so quick. So well, for those, we'll walk through that process again and getting into the book. Yep. So again, uh, uh uh, once you go to app.bookcreator.com and you sign in as a teacher, uh, sign in with your Google office or email, uh, and that will get you in. Once, once you get in, uh, you guys, as you've created your library, you should eventually get to a point that looks like this. You may see a library that looks like this, but there are no books in it. If that's the case, then click these three lines to the top left, and that will take you to the dashboard. And so you'll see your libraries up top. It says My Libraries. But then if you scroll down, you'll see where it says shared with me, and you'll see a button that says join a library. So when you click join a library, that's where you're going to uh, put that code in. And uh, Garth put that into the chat window. So that was the, um, the 699 code. All right? So you're going you're gonna to put that code in here, and then that's going to get you into my library. So from this screen here, I can see there's a little drop down that says everyone. So if I click on it, I can see the teachers that have made it into the book so far, right? They've made it into the library. There's, uh, you know what, however many there are. So that means you're in there. Now, once you're in the book or in the library, you have two options. You can either create a new book, all right, inside my library, or in this case, I went down underneath the book, clicked the share button, and said start collaboration. All right, and that allowed me to turn on collaboration for this book. So I can see somebody's working because they messed up my cover, right? So good work, somebody. Um, must have been Susan. Um, I see her name here. I'm just teasing. It's okay. That's what we're here to do, right? We're here to play around with this. So once you get into the book, you can then find a blank page. All right, any blank page is fine. I'm going to go to the very end. And again, if you don't want to join in and do this and you just want to watch, feel free to just watch. It's not a, not a big deal. There's no grade on this one. All right, so from here, once you're in a blank page, we're all working in the same book together. And I love the collaboration feature. I love it with teachers. I use it a lot when I go to conferences. Um, but the one thing I do want to caution you is this is Google-like. All right, it's not Google. So there is no revision history. All right, so if, a, if you have that kid who wants to be deterred and go in and delete kids' work, um, then that's a possibility. So when we get uh, done today, I'm going to show you another option. So it's sort of like collaboration, but it's not all in the same book at the same time. All right, so we'll talk about how you can do that uh, and still make a book, uh, just avoiding the possible issues that do happen. It is something I've taken up to the team, and hopefully it's something we can address and fix sometime soon. Uh, but right now, uh, that's what we've got. So <clears throat> from here, on a blank page, there are two really important buttons. There's a plus button and the inspector button. The plus button allows you to add content. The inspector button allows you to change or manipulate that content a little bit. So I'm going to click the plus button, and you'll see that we have media, comics, and shapes. And so I'm going to start with shapes because they're my least favorite, and I'm going to work my way up to my favorite, favorite tools. All right. So with shapes, I'm just going to click on a shape. It adds it to the page, and then I can move it around. 
I can resize it, can change the shape, I can use this little green slider and make it more rectangle, make it more rounded. But then the power happens when you can do other things with it. So one of my favorite things to do with students is to ask them to make something using just shapes. So maybe students can make their favorite storybook character only using shape. Maybe they can design their favorite scene from the story only using shape. Uh, maybe they could do uh, a historical location, right, or a specific event, but only use shape. So it's kind of fun to give them that little bit of creative constraint um, to see what they can come up with. The other thing that I see teachers doing a lot with now is you can type in the shape. So if you click inside the shape, you can type. If I go to the inspector button, I can now change the color of my shape. I can change, uh, add a shadow. I can add a border. And if I add a border, I can change the color of the border. I can then change the width of the border. Hey guys, it's Garth and I'm listening to John give a great webinar. All right, you can change the color and you can change the size. And so there you go, there's my text box. Now, what's really cool uh, with shapes specifically is that I've seen teachers use it for graphic organizers, mind maps, timelines. Um, I've seen it for uh, templates where teachers create uh, boxes and they want students to answer questions inside the boxes and make it kind of like an interactive, um, gosh, I don't, I'll say worksheet, like an interactive type of activity. Uh, and then I've also seen teachers now when we're doing this remote learning thing and we don't have a commenting feature like Google Docs does, I've seen teachers take these little shapes, put them off to the side and start typing in the comments in the shapes. And then that way they're able to tell their students what they need to fix on those pages. And when a student is done making those edits, they click the shape, hit delete, and now they're ready to move on. So shapes, like I said, looks kind of simple on the surface level, but there are some really cool things that you can do with shapes. Um, Design-wise, you can do a lot of really neat things with shapes that make your book look way more complex than people think you can do in Book Creator. Plus button. The next one is media. So I'm going to focus on the media tab. There's a whole lot going on here under media. The first one is the import tab. So when you click on the import tab, we do have a Google image search. So if I search something like this dog here, and we'll go with this guy, and we click select, that image then gets uploaded right to the page. You can click on the image. You can move it around. You can resize it. You can rotate it. Important thing to note about these images, they are all Google Safe Search images. They're the safest images Google allows. They are all copyright free and they are all labeled as non-attribution, right? So these are, that's very good to know. The other thing you can do with shapes is once they are outlined in blue like this, so you, so you just click on a shape, you click the inspector button, you can link your shape to a specific website or you can even link it to a specific page. So I really like the idea here of students making uh, like choose your own adventure books. So John went into the pet store. He couldn't decide. Did he want to buy the dog or did he want to buy the goldfish? Um, if he buys the dog, you click on dog and it goes to page 10. If he buys the goldfish, you click on the goldfish and it goes to page 7. And then it continues the story. So I think this is a really cool opportunity for students to um, kind of expand what they're doing in classrooms, try to be a little more creative and really think critically about how to develop a story uh, and all of the different moving parts of a choose your own adventure story. So I really like that idea. The other thing uh, that I always talk about with students, again, we, we talk about publishing for a global audience. And if you want to publish for a wider audience, you have to make your books accessible to everybody. And so one of the things that we now have uh, is the accessibility text. So I could type in here, white fluffy dog on a deck. And now people with visual impairments, when they're having the story read to them with our read to me mode, they're able to hear um, exactly what the images are about. So that's a really important feature. Uh, so we talk about that. All right, so that is shapes. Next, under the plus button, under media, and under import, we have a Google Maps section. So if I type in my address, because that's what your kids will do the very first time they do this, I can zoom in, and there's my house. So I can hit select. And now I can add this Google Map to my page. I can click and resize it, move it around, do what I need to do. This is a really good opportunity to pull back those shapes. So maybe I can take this arrow and say that's my house. Maybe I'll copy that arrow 
and put it over there on my wife's van and say that's my wife's van. Um, I probably just got done washing that. I like to uh, uh, detail cars on the side. So one of those dots in the driveway is a kid and one of them is a pressure washer. Um, but that's my wife's van, nice and clean. So you can use Google uh, Maps. Um, I'm a big fan of Google Maps, again, for maybe some historic timelines. Uh, maybe some timelines of personal lives. You know, where did you grow up? Uh, show me a picture. Where did you go? Or where were you at middle school? You know, where were you at high school? So being able to use uh, the Maps feature is really, really cool. All right, we'll go ahead and delete those. Next, plus button, still under media, still under import. We have an option here to upload files. So if you have uh, documents, PDFs, uh, slideshows, um, audio files, video files, images, you can bring those into your book. So if I pull in um, this PDF, I click OK or open, and it puts a PDF on the page. It does not take a PDF and turn it into an ebook. Um, so it just puts it on the page, and when you click on it, it's a little pop up window that you can scroll through the PDF and see all of the important stuff you need to see. I've seen teachers use this where it says, click on a PDF, read it, and then answer some questions in the text box that I've added to the page, right? That's a template or an activity type of book. I see Christy on my page. Christy, if you want to join and add a page, just click the plus button over there on the right. Excuse me. Uh, that will allow you to add a page to the book, and you can start working on the next page. One thing I noticed for everybody, uh, in your, when you're on the page messing around, if you go to insert, there's that welcome from John. It's, there's a box in your way, so you can't select things. So make sure you click the X then, because I'm like, I can't insert that. I can't find the insert button. Um, yeah, get, get you got to get me. rid of that box. <laughs> get rid of our little support line. Um, that's the support line I was telling you about that is troubling for students, right? Because we get a lot of inappropriate stuff from students who are just being complete goons. Um, and it's because they signed in as a teacher. And so if you sign in as a teacher, if you're a student, like I said, you break all kinds of privacy stuff. So please please make sure you tell your students not to do that. Um, all right, so I'm going to delete that PDF. So again, lots of different documents. Pretty much anything you have on your computer, you can pull in. We also have the same thing with Google Drive. So you can connect it to your Google Drive, and once you do that, it pulls up all your Google documents and folders, and you can bring in stuff from Google. My favorite uh, under this category, though, is the embed feature. And so with the embed feature, Basically, any content that you create elsewhere that has an embed code, you can put into Book Creator. So my favorite example is if I were to go to YouTube. If I go uh, into YouTube here and I click on this guy and his nice new Corvette. Um, whoop, there we go. We'll pause him. Underneath, I click the share button. Over to the left, I get that embed code. And I copy that whole pile of gobbledygook that means nothing to me. I go back to my book. I paste that in and confirm the link. Make sure that's the video I want and make sure I have the right title. And then I say add to book. And now that YouTube video is added to the book. And what's really nice about this is that when I click play, it pulls it up in a little pop-up window. But there's no commercials at the beginning. There's no commercials at the end. And there's none of that sidebar stuff, which is usually where kids get themselves into trouble. All right, so that's a really nice feature. Uh, some of the other things you can embed, Desmos calculators, Padlet file, or Padlets, uh, uh, Flipgrid, Explain Everything, uh, YouTube, Soundtrap, uh, Spotify, Playlist, things like that. Anything that has an embed code, you can dump right into Book Creator. So that makes it kind of like, uh, you know, when Book Creator was on the iPad, app smashing was a big thing. Uh, when it came to Chrome, it kind of wasn't. It was just, oh, here's Book Creator. But now the app smashing is back. Um, using the embed feature. So I really like that. All right, we'll delete that. Next one, media. We have the camera. So with the camera, you've got two options. You can take a picture. All right, still picture. And add that to your page. Same rules apply, even with the images that you take from your, um, oh, my internet wants to fight with me right now. Uh, but same, same rules apply. If I click on that image and then click the inspector, I can link it to a website. I can link it to a page. Um, I can add accessibility text, but there you go. So there's my image. I can move it around, resize it, do what I need to do. Next, under the plus button, still under media and still under camera, I now have the option to record video. And so when I click record video, it gives you a countdown, get that last burp out. Hey, John Smith here. I hit record. 
and use video and now it's going to upload that video to my page and that's very easy it's really nice um, you don't you know you don't always have to find a video somewhere else and, and try to import it you can just record that video right there I love using video with students so that they can document their learning in a way um, that might not be in the traditional kind of sense right some kids aren't good at writing and doing text but they're really great at making video or documenting things by um, you know recording stuff that they see so that's a really cool feature the other thing that we have now is if I outline my uh, video just by clicking on it, it once, if I go to the inspector yeah, so button, this we now have the ability to add captions. You can so you can add captions right to your videos. And you can add those captions in 120 different languages. So if you speak in English, you can do English captions. If you speak in Spanish, you can click the drop down and do Spanish captions. Uh, if you speak in, I don't know, Portuguese, whatever, you can do whatever. There's 120 different languages there for captions. So I can either enter them manually, or in this case, I'll just hit generate automatically. And you get the little bouncing dots. Once those little bouncing dots stop, the captions are there. If I don't want to watch those, I can click back and continue to work. Uh, and once it's done, it'll give me a little message down here, say your captions have been generated, and then the captions will appear on the video. So if I click, let me refresh this and see if I can jumpstart that for a second here. It's not going to ever take very long, but sometimes it's a little, little bit, just depending on the Wi-Fi. So there you go. All right, so there you can see the captions. I'll pause it. Um, there you go. So I'll go ahead and delete those. Plus button, media. The next one is the pen tool. And I absolutely love the pen tool. We've got five different pens. If you click the black dot, you've got all kinds of different colors. Everybody's favorite is magic ink. So as I'm drawing with the magic ink, it will automatically change the color. All right, to, to whatever the color in rainbow is at that point, right? So it just keeps going. Even if I lift up and, and keep going, it just keeps the color the way it was. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go back to uh, just black here for a second. We have a marker. We have a brush. We have a crayon. We have a highlighter for highlighting those um, things that your teachers want you to highlight in your stories. And my favorite is the auto draw. So if you've ever asked a student um, above about fifth or sixth grade to draw something, um, they probably were not happy with you. Uh, if you asked them to draw something on a trackpad, they were probably even more upset with you. They may have even kicked you in the shins or something uh, because drawing on a trackpad is probably the worst experience on the planet uh, in terms of that kind of technology thing. But with auto draw, I'm going to try to draw a bike here. Now, I'm already upset because my bike tires are not the same size. Um, it looks kind of more like a pair of broken glasses, but as I'm drawing my bike, at the top, the auto draw is trying to figure out what it is that I'm drawing. And so I say, oh, it's this bike right here. I click the bike. It changes my drawing, and now I have this really nice uh, auto-drawn bike that I can say, hey, look, I do know how to draw. How cool is that? Um, I click the X, and now I can go back and go to my colors. Maybe I pick a magic ink. Maybe I go to the fill bucket, and now I can fill in the bike, and I have a magic ink bike. We also have some emojis, so if I click an emoji, maybe I can fix that back tire and make it look like a Tour de France bike. And then I just hit done, and now I have my image. Now, because I drew them all at the same time, they're all connected, right? So the, the lines are connected, the bike is connected. But I can resize, move things around the screen, make my bike pop wheelies. That is the auto draw. So I think your teachers... And your kids are going to absolutely love auto draw. You're probably playing with it right now. Um, while you're playing, I'm going to go back here to pages view for a second. And I can see the work that you guys are doing as I'm talking. All right. So that's really cool. I do want to caution you that pages view here is not a great way to grade things. Because if I did, like I'm on page seven here, it looks like page seven uh, looks like this person has done no work at all. But if I click on page seven, I can see that Susan actually has done some work. Right, so these uh, thumbnails do not update 100% in real time. So again, just be cautious. Don't don't try to grade something from that view. All right, I'm going to go back to the last page here. I'm going to oh, I'm going to add a new page since Kylie's there. All right, on page 19, I'm going to continue media. The next we have is uh, the next button down is text. So if I just click on uh, type in some text, I can bold, italicize, or underline. I can highlight that text and link it to a page or a website. Uh, the magnifying glass here will make the text smaller or bigger just inside that box. It's not 
Uh, that's not the most you can do with text, but it just helps some kids with visual impairments to see the text a little bit better in the edit box. John, if I can um, interrupt you there. Yep. Um, so I was doing that. Is there a way to change the text color in that or no? Not in this box. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, thank yep. you. You're welcome. Um, and then from here, uh, what I always tell kids, uh, I get kids all the time that would say, I can't type, I can't spell, I don't know how to use the keyboard. Um, and I said, that's okay. Uh, you talk all the time, so let's just write with your face. Right? So if we click the microphone, um, they can write with their face. And the kids love it. Right? And I'm like, listen, you're not alone. I, I know your teachers. They can't type, they can't spell, and they can't use a keyboard either. So they should be using the microphone. Uh, and the kids, they laugh. They can think that's funny. Um, but with the microphone, if you just click it, it will start recording. There's also a drop down that comes up, um, right over here. So if I click the microphone, there's a little drop down right here that will uh, record your voice uh, in that language. Now, this one is a little goofy messed up right now because I'm speaking in English. It's trying to translate in Spanish. It doesn't do that. But if I spoke in Spanish, it would, trans it would uh, do the speech to text in Spanish. So the very first time you do this, you turn it on, you start talking, or you don't talk, and you change the drop down. And then it will be there the next time. So then I would just hit stop. I would delete all of this, and then I would start speaking Spanish the next time, and it would be fine. Um, so anyway, once you have some text in here, uh, I'll go to get Garth's question here. I just hit done. Here's my text. Not all that impressive, but if I click the inspector button, I can now drag the sl slider here to change the size. Left, center, right, justify, bold, style, size, underline. This is where I can change the font. This is where I can change the text color. This is where I can change uh, edit. <laughs> It was a bad choice. Um, you know, I'm going to say, no, I'm not a big background fan there. And I can add some shadow behind the text. So that's where you're going to change the color. Um, one of the questions I do get a lot from students and teachers is if I have a four-page Google Doc and I copy the text and paste it onto the page in Book Creator, will I make four pages in Book Creator? And the answer is no. You'll make a really ugly text box. right? So um, be strategic in how you cut and paste the text. Um, but you can do some really cool things with it. So there's some text. And then the last one under the media tab is the record button. And this is one of my favorites. So I click start and it gives you that, again, it gives you that countdown. Hello, my name is John Smith. This is my page. Hit stop. Use recording. And now I have an audio button that is added right to the page. And what I love about this is I can add that audio live right there on the page. I don't have to do it somewhere else and upload it. Um, it's just right there. So this is really fantastic. Um, I've had students use it for reading fluency. I've had students use it for making sound effects to go in the back of their stories. Uh, I've had students read their own stories uh, because they're tired of hearing the robot voice read their page, right? So now kids can read their own work. Um, it's really, really cool. Uh, I've even seen it used with um, students who are nonverbal. So they will pull in an image of something that they want on their page. They'll drag a little audio button over somebody, family member, teacher will record the audio, and then they can click play, and now Book Creator has become a touch board for nonverbal kids. And uh, instead of paying you know thousands and thousands of dollars for touch boards, you can do it right here in Book Creator. So very cool feature there. Uh, music, maybe of kids who are uh, you know instrumentally um, proficient, right? They can uh, play music in the background, and they can add that to the page as well. And then the last section here is the comic section. So I'm going to click on a panel here, and I'll just choose a different style. We'll go with this one. Once you have a panel on your page, if you click in the panel, you have two options. You can pull in images, so image from your from Google file or Drive. So if I just go with the dog here again, uh, we'll go with, back with the same guy like this guy here. All right, so we'll pull in the dog. If you don't like the way it's uh, formatted inside there, you click the little arrows. And you can resize and move around. You can also choose the uh, camera to do a, a still picture. That. You can click the plus button. You can now add speech bubbles. You can add a thought bubble. Excuse me, you can add 
text, specialized comic text here, these two in the middle, uh, basically just pre-stylized and uh, colored. That's all they really do. You can change the color, you can change the style. Uh, we have regular text, and then we have caption, which is my favorite in this section here. So now as I put the caption on, you can see it's really starting to come together and look like a comic book. Um, I love seeing what kids do with comic books, whether it's a historic graphic novel uh, or it's uh, solving math problems in comic form or, you know, you name it. I love comic books. I think it's I think it's great. Kids love them, too. And then also we have stickers. So we have two columns of pre-made stickers for you. And then we have some blank stickers. And if you want to make your own, you just click a blank sticker, move it where you want, click the plus button, add some text. And so basically you're just going to add a text box on top of the sticker. And now you can see that we've made our own sticker. So kids like to do that. Now you do have to move each piece separately. We don't have a you know group feature just yet. That's something I keep yelling at the team about. I want a group feature. Uh, but right now you just move them individually. If you click the outside edge, this white space, and then click the inspector button, you can now add some cool backgrounds behind your uh, comic book. All right, your kids are going to like that as well. I'm going to add a blank page here. Uh, by default, it remembers whatever it was that you had on the last page, but there are some other things you can do for the background. You can choose your own color. If you don't like ours, you make your own there. Uh, you can choose different paper styles. So we have graph paper. We have small graph paper. We have really tiny graph paper that nobody's going to use. We have uh, writing paper, college ruled, kindergarten, the dot game you play when you're bored at PD, the dot game you play when it's an all-day PD, the music paper. Now, if you're a trombone player or a choir director, we need to get the, the uh, bass cloth in there or even the grand staff. I know that, so don't yell at me. Um, we also have some different borders that you can choose from. We have different patterns. And my daughter calls it unicorn paper. Uh, she likes unicorn paper. Uh, I always say just be careful with this one uh, because no matter how many times you say shiplap or you enunciate shiplap, it never comes out that way and your kids will laugh. So there are the different backgrounds that you can choose from. Um, once you are finished with the book, uh, you just click this button that says My Books and you go back to here. So JC has started a new book. Very good. Um, but this is our book. So from here, I want to show you a couple of really cool features. Underneath the book, there's an icon of three books. You click on that. You can import a book from another, another location. So if you have an EPUB in your Google Drive or if somebody started something on an iPad and they want to upload it to the online version, you can do that. You can move your book to a different library. So you just click here and choose the library you want to move it to. You can also copy the book. This is what I do um, if teachers make template books and they don't want kids to mess up the template. Teacher makes a template. Kid joins the library, says copy book, chooses the library they want it to go into, and now here's an exact copy of that template that the kids can then work on. All right. Next one, you can combine books. So earlier I said that if you are scared of having collaboration turned on for your students, this might be an option. So every kid comes into your library and they make their own books. All right. And then at the end, you click combine books, you choose all the books that you want to put together. You click a couple buttons, add a title, and move on, and then you just hit combine, and it takes all of those books and it sucks them into one giant book at the end, which is really nice. And then you can delete all the other books that you don't need because you have the combined version, all right, which is pretty cool. And then, obviously, you make a mistake, you can delete a book. In the middle, click the share button, publish online. So if I click it once, make sure this is all good, click it again, that book is now published online. Your kids are official authors. Copy that link, share that out through Seesaw, share it out through email, share it out through Twitter, whatever. Now people around the world can view your book uh, and, and, and leave you comments over email or Twitter or whatever and tell your kids how awesome they are. Um, what's also really nice about this is if the book is published, once you publish it, you can still continue to edit the book, and those edits will remain uh, or will show up online automatically. They, all they have to do is just refresh the page, and then all the, the changes are there. You don't have to stop publishing, edit, republish. It's just done. All right, so that's a really nice feature. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. Some teachers get a little worried when you hear the word publish because they're like, oh, my gosh, I don't want my kids' work out there. Um, definitely be cautious of that. Make sure that your kids have signed media release forms. Make sure your parents know, blah, blah, blah. Make sure it's okay. Um, but the other thing that, parent, that teachers need to know is that it's only viewable with the link. Uh, I can't go to Google and search John Smith's 
uh, playground book, demo library, whatever, and find it, it'll never be there, right? I have to have the link, so it's not searchable. And then the share button again, turn on or off collaboration. I can download it as an ebook, and then I can print this out. Uh, some teachers get really excited here. It's not we're not like Shutterfly uh, or something like that. Uh, it's a PDF. You download it as a PDF, and then you are able to um, print that out. I've had some schools take it to their high school print shops and do some really cool hardbound books, um, but we don't do that. Uh, so that's the print option. And then there's a play button. So if you click play, this is what your book would look like online. You can click through it, and this is available on any. Uh, internet connected device so you can just uh, pull right in there awesome thank you bonus points bonus points right here iPod teacher is awesome cool rules um, and then there's some settings for your library alone so if I click the gear icon I can rename my library I can allow Google image search or turn it off turn on or off the ability for students to edit their own work uh, so let's say the deadline was Friday for the paper uh, if you didn't do that then you can turn that off and now kids cannot edit their own books you can allow the students to see other kids work or not. A lot of teachers want to turn this off because they don't want kids stealing ideas from each other. That's fine. Uh, or you can, and also you can allow students to publish your books by themselves. So again, I just recommend you uh, look at your, you know, district policies and things like that before you just allow kids to willy nilly start publishing books online. Um, take a look at that. And then if you don't want to publish individual books, you can actually publish an entire library. So I've got a whole library, you know, of, of work on a science topic. Every kid got their own chapter. So now every kid has, you know, this kid's got photosynthesis, and this kid has mitosis, and this kid has whatever. So you can publish the library. So one link, every book that's in that library is then viewable uh, by whoever has that link. All right? So that's a really cool uh, feature as well. Okay. That is Book Creator. Hey, John. JC yes. wanted to know how many, if there's a page limit to the number of, of pages in a book? The short answer is no. The long answer is maybe. Um, and I think the number is like 6,000 pages or something like that. So basically, no, there's no limit to the number of pages you can make in a book. And I, okay. know, I know what you're thinking, yeah. JC. Our, our textbook. I'm sorry, say again? No, I, I just said thank you. Uh, 6,000 pages will not... Uh, Kids can't make it that long in sixth grade social studies, so maybe <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll try it. I don't know. I've seen some of the stuff that Gar's kids have done. They might they might get close. Um, I don't know. JC is the sixth grade teacher beneath me, so he's building online books right now with all the sixth grade kids. They're doing independent books of the sixth what? grade curriculum, but they're using currently um, Google Sites. Sites, yeah. So gotcha. then when they get to me, we do a collaborative book, so... <clears throat> Yeah, I'd like to, John, I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about, uh, you mentioned this briefly about the printing, but I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about some success stories, uh, some, you know, kind of curricular integration. I mean, obviously, these kind of things, we immediately think literacy-based content integration, but obviously there's there's other areas. So can you, and we just talk social studies, but talk a little bit more about the, uh, you know, the different kinds of features. Yeah. And, Ways that you've seen people use this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I always tell the book creator people I said the worst thing about our company is our name um, because usually when you say books, that's when the math and science teachers are like, "Peace out, we don't do books, right?" Um, so a couple of things uh, for, for math, for example, um, I think it's it's really important. Uh, like when kids come to me and say, "We hate the math book. It's it's boring. It's whatever." I love going back to the kids and saying, "Okay." Um, I get it. Maybe I don't like the math book either. But if you think you can do better than a multi-million dollar company, let's make our own math textbook. And so then over the course of the year, we take our information and we put it in there and we make our own math textbook in our style with our videos, things like that to really enhance the learning. Kids love that kind of stuff. And so I always do that. Um, in terms of, you know, like if I'm looking at my list here. So let me, let, me click on, uh, let me click on science here, for example. So when you click on this resources tab um, in science, what it will do is it will pull up uh, you know, some books, some ideas here for science, but then you'll scroll down and you can see some other really cool things. Some of these books are written by students. Some of these books are written by teachers. Uh, it could be a combination of both. So we've got you know, mitosis alert, right? So telling a story about mitosis, right? But, but making it a little more fun than just like a, a definition of mitosis. Uh, you know, vaccines and antibi uh, antibiotics, right? Very timely. You know, so you can do, um, you know, 
fictional stories that are about, about science or non-fiction stories about science or, you know, the um, all, all kinds of different things, comic books on biomes, things like that. So instead of just a, the typical kind of worksheet, how can we take that knowledge that they're learning on a topic and do something really special with it? Uh, I personally have worked with, um, you know, in my old district, we did our professional development manual um, for teachers using Book Creator so that teachers could see what it was that we, uh, what we could provide for them. Here's some examples from uh, like PE class. You know, this is something that, you know, most PE classes are not going to say, oh yeah, we're going to write books. Um, but there's all kinds of things. So we've got learning journals, right? So as you're going throughout the course of the year, um, how is, how is my uh, physical fitness? You know, what was my result uh, at the beginning of the year and how did I perform at the end of the year? So like a fitness journal, um, you know, how do you play tennis? You know, how do you eat properly? All kinds of things that you can really do in here. So I would personally say that I think that, you know, uh, books can fit every subject, obviously, because every subject has some kind of textbook, right? So you have some kind of learning that can be done through a book style. Um, but you can do lots of things. Uh, construction trades classes can do how-to books, you know, um, you know, framing a wall for dummies or whatever. Um, you know, special education. Again, for me, again, this was just, this was how I got my start with, with books, was that was the only way I could get my kids excited, uh, was showing them how easy Book Creator was, showing them that um, people from around the world were going to love their stuff and comment on it. That was, that was huge. Um, I have a friend uh, who has done some really cool things with uh, social studies books. Uh, one of my favorites, though, actually, is this new one that uh, we, just, we just found out about. Here's an AP uh, history class. And what this uh, student did was an AP Euro journal, uh, sorry, Euro yearbook. So if you open this up, you've got historical figures, and this is a yearbook of those historical figures. And so, I mean, there's some really, really interesting history buff, but uh, there are some really cool things in here that are, that are kind of interesting, right? They, they take historical figures and put them by grade levels, and there's actually a sports section in here. Um, you know, freshman, sophomore, the numbers, you know, I mean, it's really good stuff that kids can come up with um, for all kinds of grade levels and all different subject areas. Um, and I think one of the other things that's important about Book Creator, uh, in, in, when you're thinking about technology integration, uh, as a technology integration specialist, I had to fight with teachers sometimes that were just reluctant to use technology. Book Creator is super easy to use. And it's one of those things where after I show teachers, you know, how to use Book Creator over 30 minutes or so, I look at them and say, hey, guess what? That was 27 and a half minutes longer than it would take me to show a second grader, right? You just show a second grader the plus button, the I button, and then they're off and running. So there's very little learning curve. And it, a lot of times it gets those reluctant teachers kind of on board with technology. And now you can kind of open their minds to trying different things with technology as well. John, there were a couple other questions just to reiterate, make sure we got this um, right. Yep. So one of the questions in here was the free version gives you 40 books. Is that right? That is correct. And then after that, um, can you delete them or combine those books? Absolutely. So this is uh, Teachers Are Smart, right? They're going to figure this out. You've got 40 books. Uh, it's 40 active books. So if I have a class of 39 students and I want them to all make a book, I can then take that book, combine it, and then um, I now have 39 books that in that library that I can use for those kids again. Um, and with the collaboration feature that's a part of the pay plan, you can take you can stretch that out even further. So once your library is filled and you have no more books available in that library, you can archive a library and start a new library with 40 books that will um, let you play around in there. So um, what is the paid version? How much, is, how much is that paid version? Those were the questions they had. Yep. So the, the first paid version is $60 per teacher uh, per year, and it gives you 180 books split between three, uh, split evenly between three libraries, so 60 books per library. Uh, and then the, our top plan is $120 a year per teacher, and it gives you 1,000 books, and it gives you unlimited libraries. So now you can think of a library as individual portfolio, small group work, every class could have a library, a lot of different things you can do with those libraries. Um, the, the $120 plan is the one that we go to districts with uh, in school buildings. So if you're going to buy more than five licenses, that's really the way to go because you can start getting discounts. And then the admins will actually have the ability to join our admin console, and then they can see analytics, they can assign and distribute licenses, 
And if you find out that, you know, you know, Mr. Johnny down the street isn't using uh, his license, you can revoke his license and give it to somebody else who's going to use it. So, um, yeah, so that's those are the plans that we have. So 120 was unlimited books, and what was unlimited, it? Unlimited libraries, 1,000 books. Okay. Yeah, any, any more questions? Yeah, if you guys have questions, there's a few of us here. If you have a question directly for, for John, just unmute your mic yeah. and be feel free to ask. Yeah. I have a library. It looks like it's a library from you guys. Um, I have two separate links. One is to my own um, book creator account, but then I have one where every time I get books shared with me, like the Google Infuse Classroom and using a book like Monica Burns and Michael Hernandez. Yeah. Is there hey, Jennifer, sorry, can you, can you put your mic down to your mouth so we can hear you? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Cause I, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry, Rick. Um, is there a way to add those books to my library, or do those have to stay separate? So right now, um, those books are separate. Uh, okay. They're, they're, yeah, the, uh, the only way that you can make a copy of that in your library is if you knew the library owner, and you could say, can I join your library and make a copy of your book? Um, okay. That's really the only way to do it now. Um, we, are going, we are working on a feature now where we will be able to, from a, um, from a global level, be able to uh, push books out to people. So if you, um, you know, if you as an admin, let's say, wanted to create a, a book that you wanted to share with your staff, staff handbook, um, you know, PD book, something like that, right now they would have to join your library and make a copy of it if they wanted to view it. Or you could publish it online, give them a link. Now or in the future, you'll be able to say, here's a template book. I'm going to push this out to my, my staff, and it becomes part of a staff library. Okay, good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. So we are uh, near the end. We've got just a couple minutes left, and, and we do have time for a couple more questions. Sean, thank you so much. Uh, really insightful and interesting work, and I especially enjoyed seeing the curricular integration. Uh, just for those of you in the uh, chat, I did place the, uh, at the bottom of the chat links again for the uh, contact hours form, uh, but then there's also the link if you're interested in, in presenting on your own uh, content or requesting new training or, or tutorials. So uh, please make sure you visit both of those. So any other uh, final questions for John? Well, while you're thinking of questions, I just want to thank everybody for letting me uh, come in and talk with you this evening. I appreciate it. Again, if you have questions, John Smith at bookcreator.com. Uh, no H in John, or if you uh, want to uh, send me a tweet, you can send me a tweet as well. And I, I see some comments coming through. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, oh yeah, so happy bookmaking, right? Yes. Well, John, thank you. I appreciate you uh, taking the time. I know when I contacted you, you were more than willing to, to come and talk to everybody. I'll put your email um, on there, and your Twitter's already on my page. I'll make sure it's there where people can see it, and I'll put your email on there as well. So if people want to get in touch with you directly, we'll have a copy of that. Absolutely. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yep. Have a great evening. Yep. You too. Thank you so much. That's right. awesome. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, John. Bye bye.